This changes everything. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, a credit card bombshell just hit and why it will affect everyone, including those who don't have cards. Let's over to Bloomberg, where we picked today's story up with a headline, U.S. consumer borrowing rises at the slowest pace since late 2020. Now, why this matters is because in a debt-based economy, you need to see a constant expansion of debt. And when you're in a period where you have a massive amount of debt built up, as we've seen not only during the last expansion, but particularly after the pandemic, well, you need even more debt to be created, not only to pay on the existing debt, but to create economic growth. So when you start to see headlines that credit is slowing, well, it means bad things are coming. U.S. consumer borrowing slowed to a more than two-year low in May, reflecting the first decline in non-revolving credit since the onset of the pandemic. Total credit rose a mere $7.2 billion, the smallest advance since November 2020. The figure, which isn't adjusted for inflation, actually missed everybody's forecast, and it makes sense because everyone thought the number would be a whole lot higher. Non-revolving credit, such as loan for school tuition and vehicle purchase, decreased $1.3 billion the first decline since April 2020. So here we're seeing, you know, all of a sudden signs that everything is starting to slow down and we expect to see it in the credit space. And now we've got evidence that this is going to affect not just cardholders who are perhaps facing, you know, hitting their limits on their cards, but it's going to affect everyone as the economy slows. Revolving credit or credit card debt, which includes credit cards, rose $8.5 billion, representing a slowdown after a sharp gains in the previous two months. Credit cards issued by commercial banks carried a whopping 20.68% rate in May, a record in Fed data going back to 1972. And my friends, if the Fed has it their way and they're talking about it, that rate's going to go even higher in the months that come. And so this is where we start to get the picture of are borrowers hitting the limit on their cards and are banks starting to say, hey, you know what? We don't want to extend more credit or a whole lot more credit because we're getting nervous about the economy. Meanwhile, borrowers are saying, hey, look, have you seen inflation? Have you seen where prices are going? I need more credit and perhaps it's just not there. And here we can see why that might be happening is because if we look at total consumer credit and we look at then the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for credit cards. Now that one's shown in red. So anytime that red line is over the horizontal black line, it means on net banks are saying, hey, you know what? We don't want to extend as much credit to, to card borrowers. And sure enough, look at what immediately starts to happen is you get a slowdown in credit creation and then it heads off the cliff. We can of course see that during the pandemic briefly, but now look, we're seeing that sign again. Banks are starting to tighten standards on credit cards and lo and behold, credit usage is slowing. That shown as change in billions of dollars there in the blue line. So it's validating what we know that banks are critical here when they tighten lending standards. That means less credit is created and lo and behold, the economy should start to slow in a remarkable way. While low unemployment and steady wage gains have provided many consumers with the wherewithal to keep spending, persistently high prices have led others to dig into savings or rely on credit cards to keep up. Adjusted for inflation, consumer spending has largely stalled after surging at the start of the year. Delinquency rates, meanwhile, are ticking up, and no surprise that delinquency rates should tick up. This is exactly what happens when banks tighten lending standards. And here you can see on this chart, again, total consumer credit owned and securitized, shown in change of billions of dollars, the same as last slide. And here we're going to look at the delinquency rate on credit card loans shown in red, that on a year over year rate change. And lo and behold, no surprise, as credit creation slows, delinquency rates rise. And you see it here again happening right now. Delinquency rates on a year over year rate change are rising as consumer credit slows. And it makes sense because, again, in a debt based economy, Economy. We like to use this analogy of a game of musical chairs. There's never enough money to pay on all the debt. So as consumer credit creation slows, there's less money to pay on the existing debt. The music stops. And next thing you know, people go into delinquency and then eventually into default. 
And here we can just cut out the middleman, of course, in the credit creation view, and now look at the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for credit cards against the delinquency rate on credit cards. And you can see these two have a very close relationship that as banks tighten lending standards, delinquency rates go up. This is no surprise that this is happening and we can expect it to only get worse. And there's a shocking drop in auto loans in that report as well that results in the weakest consumer credit print since 2020. And one thing that shouldn't have a shocking drop, well, that's your trading account. As we showed on this show back uh, earlier this year, we noted that uh, actually a couple, maybe even a month or so ago, that the trade of soybeans, we showed you our CTA Timer Pro report, said you should buy right here on this day. It showed a signal because our report looks at the machine position and runs historical overlay. It said buy right here. And if you just done nothing but follow that trade and you ride it up and just following the report, you'd be up over 8% right now. And what we usually suggest is take the trade put a stop loss underneath and build into it if it goes higher here you can see on june 8th just a month ago the machines were max short across the board and we suggested to our subscribers when the fast algorithm starts to short cover which it did on the 9th you can check your charts that's when you should take a position put a stop loss under it and if it rallies then add to the position if it stops you out look for the next opportunity it's the link for cta time pro in the description below, 30 bucks a month, a dollar a day will change how you trade. Don't like it? Just ask us within 30 days, we'll give you your money back. The shocker was a non-revolving segment, also known as student and auto loans, which unexpectedly dropped by 1.3 billion. This is a shocker because, as Zero Hedge notes, while the monthly change in revolving credit can fluctuate significantly month to month, the non-revolving credit increase has historically been a consistent 10 plus billion. Only in the past six months, which has not been the case, and as shown below, we have seen the sharp drop in the monthly increase in non-revolving credit, which after five months of drops, finally printed negative to the tune of minus 1.62 billion, the first negative print since April of 2020. So what that means is people are paying off those loans and not borrowing enough to create new ones. And this is a huge problem because in a debt-based economy, you do not want to see a contraction in debt. And I know everyone says it'd be wonderful if the government paid off the national debt and if everyone was debt-free, but unfortunately, that's just not how our monetary system works. It's predicated on the ever expansion of debt, whether it's government debt, commercial debt from businesses or private debt from consumers, debt needs to expand. So when you see this start to happen and on a contraction, it tells you the economy is going down with it. And perhaps one of the problems in the car market, we now have this as use, wholesale use prices, vehicle prices see the largest decline in June. This from Mannheim Used Vehicle Index has now noted that it's down 10.3% a year ago and dropped a whopping 4.2%. So that means vehicle prices have massively dropped on the use side. Now, this is not going to immediately uh, pop into the CPI report that we should get tomorrow, but we can look for the months to come, the member used pr uh, vehicle prices were a big driver of inflation. Now they couldn't be a big driver of disinflation and perhaps deflation. The 4.2% drop is among the largest declines in history and the largest decline since the start of the pandemic in April 2020 when the index plunged 11.4%. The year-over-year -year decline was also large, another 27 drop from May's annual seven, annualized 76 decline. But as mentioned last month, auction prices were lower in the fall of last year, and we expect these increasing year-over-year -year moves to shrink in the months ahead as the market normalizes. Buyers at auction look to have taken an early summer break while the used retail inventory has been improving over the last several weeks. And part of the problem here may be the new vehicle market, perhaps as we see, of course, shipping time start to normalize and chips moving across the country or across the world get to the new vehicles. It could be the other factor here is new vehicle inventory is rising and those who wanted a new vehicle, they couldn't get one, were buying used. Perhaps now they can get the vehicle they want putting some downward pressure on used prices, but still eventually this will all come back to the CPI. 
As used retail vehicle sales declined in June, well, we know that because they weren't getting credit for them. Assessing retail vehicle sales based on observed changes in advertised units, we initially estimate that used vehicle retail sales in June were down 4% compared to May, if you can imagine. So again, we start to look back to the credit creation engine here and saying, look, for autos and for student loans, it decreased, it's been steadily decreasing, tells us what's going on in the auto market, should be validated by fewer sales, and sure enough, that's exactly what we're seeing. So the credit data here is having major implications, not just from the revolving side on the credit card data, but the non-revolving side as well. And as I started the show, this will have implications, not just for card holders who are looking perhaps to increase their cap on their cards, but for those who don't even use credit to see the economy Economy slowing down in a big way and yet there's even more evidence as cash trap consumers cut back on toilet paper and toothpaste well hopefully they don't come back too much as data which tracks retail sales reveals consumers are decreasing their spending on personal hygiene products like toilet paper toothpaste and laundry detergent sales for those items in the 52 weeks since june 24th were down three to four percent all right now here's a question for you are you cutting down on your spending of hygiene products put let us know in the description below what you're up to and if that validates what we're seeing in this report the strains that the consumers under have been exasperated by the last couple of months. As she noted, of course, this lady from Morningstar and analysts, a reduction in food assistance programs, lower tax revenues, and the end of stimulus checks that were gone for some time ago are some of the reasons for faltering consumers. Also, we noted that inflation outpaces wage growth for two years, has crushed households. We've been saying this for a while, forcing many to drain their savings and rack up enormous credit card debt in a high rate environment, perhaps now where they can't get more credit to extend that so they've got to start trading down and here's the reason why when we take a look at total income the average weekly hours and multiplied by the average hourly earnings of production and non-supervisory employees or total compensation against the consumer price index what have we noted that coming out of the pandemic wages were above the consumer price index and now they're below and staying below and of course this means inflation is coming down as people have less to spend but it's just validating what we're seeing here is eventually it was a matter of time before savings are drain credit cards were maxed out and people start having to trade down but according to the fed well they haven't done enough because there has to be more pain for consumers in the future as fed officials say higher interest rates are needed to reach their two percent inflation goal and man maybe in only a matter of months we'll get there we'll see tomorrow's cpi report should likely show inflation coming down as we're likely to need a couple more rate hikes over the course of this year to really bring inflation back into a path that's along a sustainable two percent path as according to san francisco fed president mary daly of course the really issue here is mary is when you get to two percent it's going to go below the that, and it's going to keep going down because you have no clue what you're doing. And Daly said the risk of doing too little to curb inflation still outweigh the risk of doing too much, although the gap between those two is narrowing. She said she's starting to see signs the economy is slowing and as the supply and demand are coming into better shape. Of course, I like this. There's the risk of doing too, here, read this again, too little to curb inflation still outweighs the risk of doing too much. Well, Mary Daly, the risk of doing too much is we're going to have a globally synchronized recession and a banking crisis. If you want that on on your resume will keep going because here we can see the issue is the fed keeps inverting the yield curve and if they go through with their next couple of hikes as they're threatening to do we'll find out more at their next meeting and of course based on the cpi report tomorrow these steep inversions cause the banks to continue to tighten lending standards because when short-term rates are higher than long-term rates the banks don't make any money lending so they don't lend and that causes credit creation to slow and that means the economy comes crashing down but of course our former fed chair now the treasury secretary janet yellen says it's still too early to rule out the risk of a u.s recession and of course as you know we don't agree with that at all 
The risk of recession is not completely off the table, she said, as monthly job growth is slowing as expected after holding a high level. We have a healthy economy, a great labor market, inflation too high, and a concern of ours and the American people, but coming down over time, she says. And it's my hope and my belief that there is a path to bring inflation down in the context of a healthy labor market, and the data I've seen suggests we're on that path. Well, Janet Yellen, the data I've seen so we're not on that path at all. Here you can see the net percentage of banks tightening lending standards for commercial industrial loans. This of firms of all sizes against the consumer price index. And we can note that when banks tighten lending standards, when that blue line is above the horizontal black line, inflation eventually spins over and heads down. And we can see that during the dot-com bubble. We see it during the global financial crisis. And we're seeing it now suggesting that she's right. Inflation's coming down. But she said with no hit to the labor market, well, not a chance, because when banks tighten lending standards, they create less money. Less money in the economy means the economy doesn't grow as much. And when it doesn't grow as much, you don't need as many people working. And sure enough, as banks tighten lending standards, the four-week moving average of initial claims heads higher. We see again during the dot-com bubble, global financial crisis, and we're seeing the early onset of that now. Of course, we'll have the CPI data tomorrow. We'll have the update on the weekly claims on Thursday. And of course, you know we'll talk about both of those then. But now you can see what's going on in the credit card space not only affects those with cards who are perhaps hitting the limit on them, but affects everyone because as credit creation slows, a broad economy hits a recession, and that, my friends, will affect all of us. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.